The National Airline of the Netherlands, KLM, was founded in 1919 and is the oldest airline on Earth. The airline has a long history dating back to World War II, the post-war period, and the jet aircraft boom. Until now, this is still an important bridge connecting Europe with other regions of the world. This delicious piece of cake always makes both Boeing and Airbus compete to bring the plane into KLM's fleet. And until now, Boeing has absolutely dominated almost the entire airline fleet. As a result, when news broke that KLM wanted to upgrade its long-haul fleet, people believed they would continue to choose Boeing aircraft, specifically the 787. But surprisingly, they decided to choose Airbus a 350 instead. So what's going on? Why does KLM build its future fleet based on Airbus? Let's find out. First about the history of KLM as mentioned above, the airline was founded in 1919 and in 2004 KLM joined SkyTeam, an international airline alliance. The same year, the airline was acquired by Air France to create Air France, KLM, one of the world's largest air carriers. But it is different from some other recent airline mergers, such as those of two U.S. airlines, United Continental and Delta Northwest. Under the terms of the deal, the two airlines continued to operate as separate companies, retaining their own hubs, flights, and logos. The Air France KLM Group is currently owned by shareholders, of which the French state is the largest, with a 28.6% stake, while the Dutch state currently holds 9.3%. It can be said that although both share the same board of directors to provide things like strategic direction and financial management, but basically their original team and network are still clearly different. The proof is in their fleet, while Air France favors Airbus and KLM prefers Boeing. And once the airline is entrenched in its own Boeing or Airbus ecosystem, they are more likely to stay loyal to a manufacturer they chose from the start. This ensures the similarity of the fleet uniformity between aircraft, helping the airline save a lot of costs in training pilots, they can fly more than one aircraft at the same time, and extremely beneficial in the maintenance of future aircraft. Therefore, many people believe that Air France KLM will remain their choice when they intend to update their fleet. Air France would get Airbus planes and KLM would get Boeing again. Specifically, the first speculation said that KLM would purchase the 787-10 while Air France would purchase the A350. So everyone was surprised when it was announced that the group's true intentions were that they would buy up to 90 A350s and those jets would be delivered to both Air France and KLM. So what's behind their move? The Air France KLM Group CEO Ben Smith disclosed that this decision was made for three key reasons. The first one is range. The two Airbus A350 Series 900 and 1000 have operating ranges of more than 15,300 kilometers and 16,100 kilometers, respectively. They completely beat the 787 10 with a range of 11,730 kilometers. It can be said that this is a huge advantage for Airbus because this is a very important factor that enables KLM to travel to locations that Boeing is unable to, such as South America and South Africa. Since Russia invaded its airspace, the country has closed its doors to European airlines, including KLM. And due to geographical location, Russia is located in the area separating Europe and Asia, which is why flights between the two regions have been interrupted a lot. That leads to the fact that any airline that wants to perform these tasks has to take unreasonably long detours. Now consider that the direct flight from Amsterdam to Tokyo is only about 9,300 kilometers, and it is within the range of what the 787-10 can achieve, but the above interruptions cause the route to be extended by about 1,900 kilometers. And if you encounter bad weather such as extremely strong winds, the flight will definitely go beyond what the Dash 10 can endure. That's why the A350 is a better choice for KLM to fly to the Far East, despite unfavorable conditions. The second major factor pointed out is price. That's right, in any transaction, price always plays an important role, and aviation is no exception. The A350 seems more competitive in price than the Dash 10. The starting price of the Dash 900 is 317 million USD, about 20 million USD lower than the Dash 10 at 338 million USD. And with an order of 90 aircraft, 
the savings amount to nearly 2 billion USD. However, these savings estimates are not entirely correct because it's also important to remember that airlines almost seldom pay the entire price for new aircraft, especially when purchasing in bulk. But even so, it can be seen that Airbus was very aggressive in pricing with a price good enough to entice KLM to change their allegiance to this deal. Another driving force behind KLM's actions is availability. At the time the deal was signed, unfilled orders for the Airbus A350 were less than those for the Boeing 787. Additionally, Airbus is currently producing more A350s monthly than Boeing is producing 787s. With first deliveries scheduled for 2026, KLM will be able to obtain the Airbus sooner, and soon even in cases where the backlog of orders for the two aircraft is the same. There is also absolutely no guarantee that KLM will receive 787 any sooner. Do you agree with me? Please comment yes or no to let me know. Well, the reason I say that is because in recent years, Boeing has been known to have a lot of delivery delays. They've really had difficulty building Dreamliners. There have been several issues with quality control in the program. At one point, 787 production was completely frozen. Boeing has worked hard to fix these problems, but it seems they still haven't completely gotten out of the mess. Previously, the company discovered a new manufacturing vulnerability causing the already delayed delivery of nearly 100 Dreamliners to be further delayed. In short, there is no certainty as to when airlines will be able to get their hands on the 787. Meanwhile, sooner or later, KLM will have to renew their fleet, and they intend to do this soon. Therefore, the availability of the Airbus A350 has brought large orders to the company. So essentially, KLM needs an aircraft that is cheaper to operate, has a longer range, has a lower list price, and can be delivered sooner. That's why KLM turned to Airbus. However, has Boeing completely lost its opportunity? It is true that they lost a big contract and they also lost a potential customer in this transaction. But if we look closer, we'll find out that Air France KLME's leadership initially said that the A350-900, A350-1000, the 787-10 and 777-9 were all candidates that would be considered for their future fleet. So now it's clear that both the Dash 900 and Dash 1000 have been purchased and have been firmly transferred to the 787-10. But what about the 777-9? A350 won the referendum against the 787-10, not the 777 -10. So does Dash 9 still have the opportunity to fly with the KLM fleet? Well, seems quite reasonable considering that plane. After all, KLM used to utilize the 747-400 quite a bit, and it never fully regained its lost capacity. While a 350-1000 is a large aircraft, the 777-9 is an almost one-to-one -one replacement for the 747. And aircraft of this size are becoming increasingly necessary the hub of KLM Amsterdam Airport Schiphol has severe slot restrictions. And in an effort to reduce the number of aircraft movements at the airport from the 500,000 that occurred today, the Dutch government is aggressively working to cap the overall number of aircraft movements at the airport. Currently, there is a lot of opposition to this action. However, should it come into force, KLM might require even larger aircraft to maintain capacity as fewer aircraft are being used. And in the end, to judge whether KLM needs the 999-9 or not, it is necessary to look at how their orders for a 350 variants are distributed. If it turns out that the smaller 900 variant makes up the majority of that order, it might mean that the airline plans to buy more 777-9 in the future, which have a larger capacity. Vice versa, if the distribution is skewed more towards the larger 1,000. Naturally, the percentage of orders from Boeing will decrease. So it will have to be seen whether Boeing has another chance to gain a place in KLM's new fleet. KLM, recognized as the world's longest operating airline and a member of the Air France KLM Group, has announced intentions to modernize its wide-body aircraft fleet. When it came to this announcement, many thought that the airline would opt the Boeing Dreamliner 787 because it has traditionally operated a Boeing-dominated fleet since 1969 when it received it first Boeing, which was a 747. But no, their decision turned out to be all about Airbus A350. So what's behind this decision? Why is it shocking? And is there any other chance for Boeing?
Range in a recent interview with Bloomberg, Air France KLM CEO Ben Smith explained that preference for the Airbus A350 over the Boeing 787-10s is due to its superior range. The A350-1000 boasts a range of 8,700 nautical miles, while the A350-900's range is close behind at 8,300 nautical miles. In contrast, the 787-10's range is much shorter with 6,430 nautical miles. So with plans to expand in South America and South Africa, the A350's additional range is a strategic advantage, especially given the current restrictions on European carriers flying over Russian airspace due to the conflict in Ukraine, the range is crucial for Air France KLM. With Russia's airspace closure to European airlines, including KLM, direct flights between Europe and Asia have become complicated. These restrictions necessitate detours that add significant distance to flights. For example, a flight from London to Tokyo now takes about 13 hours and 44 minutes, nearly two hours longer than before, due to a detour of almost 1,800 miles to avoid Russian airspace. Normally, the direct distance from Amsterdam to Tokyo is roughly 5,000 nautical miles, a distance comfortably within the 787-10's range. However, with the detours necessitated by the airspace closure, along with the consideration of adverse weather and wind conditions, the 787-10's range is pushed to its limits. Given the likelihood that these airspace restrictions will continue, it makes strategic sense for KLM to opt for the Airbus A350, which boasts a longer range capable of handling routes to the Far East under any circumstances. Cost efficiency is another significant factor in Air France KLM's decision-making. The A350s are reportedly more affordable than the 787s, with a list price of about 317 million US dollars each, saving roughly $20 million per aircraft compared to the Boeing 787s. When considering the 50 A350s on order, this could mean a potential saving of approximately $1 billion for Air France KLM. The savings could reach nearly $2 billion if the option for an additional 40 aircraft is exercised. But it's important to note that aircraft list prices are often subject to negotiation, so the actual savings may vary from these estimates. There's speculation that Airbus may have offered competitive pricing to secure the deal with Air France KLM. The savings are not solely from the lower price of the aircraft, but also from another factor, which is the maintenance process. Airbus has aimed for a 10% reduction in direct maintenance costs for the A350 compared to its Boeing counterpart. The airframe of the A350, composed of 53% carbon fiber reinforced plastic and 14% titanium, demands less maintenance. Additionally, the A350's systems are designed to be less complex, leading to fewer maintenance tasks. Airbus's optimized maintenance program for the A350 further enhances its cost efficiency. Moreover, the reliability of the A350's engines contributes to reduced repair frequency and cost. Collectively, these factors can lead to a maintenance cost saving of up to 25% over 15 years for the A350, making it an economically attractive choice for airlines prioritizing long-term operational savings. Additionally, the availability of the A350s has been a decisive factor. Airbus had a shorter backlog for the A350 compared to Boeing's 787 at the time of the agreement, and Airbus is also producing A350s at a higher rate than Boeing's 787s. Consequently, KLM is positioned to receive the Airbus aircraft more swiftly, with the first delivery slated for 2026. Even if Boeing had a smaller or equivalent backlog, there was no certainty of prompt delivery for the Dreamliners. Boeing has encountered significant challenges in manufacturing 787s, including various quality control issues that once halted production entirely. Despite efforts to resolve these problems, in June last year, Boeing identified another production defect, causing further delays for about 100 Dreamliners. The problem was identified in the horizontal stabilizers fittings, which are part of the tail section of the planes. This flaw, described as a non-conforming condition, has necessitated inspections and potential repairs, impacting near-term deliveries. So, with Air France KLM aiming to deploy their new aircraft by 2026, opting for the 787-10s would pose a significant risk. At first glance, KLM appears to be contradicting its previous stance, but there are compelling reasons behind Air France KLM's choice. To understand this decision, one must consider KLM's history. Established in 1919, KLM, 
formerly known as KLM Royal Dutch Airlines, is the Netherlands flag carrier, headquartered in Amsterdam with its main hub at Amsterdam Airport Schiphol. With over 35,000 employees and more than 100 aircraft, KLM is the oldest airline that is still in operation. After years of success, KLM agreed to merge with Air France on September 30, 2003, forming the Air France KLM Holding Company. This merger created the world's largest airline group at the time. But in contrast to other notable airline mergers such as United Continental and Delta Northwest, Air France and KLM have maintained distinct brand identities. They operate under a shared board of directors responsible for strategic and financial oversight, yet their operational elements, including staff and flight paths, are kept separate. This separation extends to their aircraft fleets, which are markedly different. Air France predominantly operates Airbus planes, while KLM has a preference for Boeing aircraft. They also maintain operating their own hubs. Presently, the group possesses 552 aircraft and serves over 300 global destinations, ranking as Europe's fourth largest airline by passenger numbers after Lufthansa, Ryanair, and International Airlines Group. Here's the situation. KLM has traditionally operated a Boeing-dominated fleet with a mere 11 Airbus planes, including two variants 200 and 300 of the A330 family. On the other hand, Air France is current operating 218 aircraft with only 73 Boeings, accounting for approximately only 33% of the fleet. You see, considering the separate backgrounds and different fleet configurations of the two members, when Air France KLM Group prepared to update their aircraft, the industry anticipated that each airline would follow its usual pattern. Air France acquiring Airbus planes and KLM opting for Boeing. Initial speculations even pointed towards Air France choosing the A350 and KLM selecting the 787-10. This is because when an airline becomes deeply integrated with a specific aircraft manufacturer, such as Boeing or Airbus, it's rare for them to switch allegiance. The advantages of this loyalty include uniformity in the fleet, streamlined maintenance, and the ability to influence the design of future models. Moreover, in 2019, CEO Ben Smith even declared that KLM's long-haul operations would rely solely on Boeing 777s and 787s. Thus, it was quite unexpected when Air France KLM unveiled a plan to replace their Boeing 777-200ERs and Airbus A330s with an order of 50 Airbus A350s, with the possibility of adding another 40 instead of the Boeing 787-10s. And this acquisition plan is not only for Air France but for both members. More interesting Interestingly, with a total 90 order and current 29 A350s operated by Air France, the Air France KLM Group would surpass Singapore Airlines, which is operating 63 A350s, to become the largest operator of this aircraft. So what about Boeing? The switch to Airbus is a considerable setback for Boeing, potentially costing them billions. Yet. Boeing may still find an opportunity with Air France KLM. Reports indicate that the airline group had four aircraft models under consideration for fleet renewal, including the A350-900, A350-1000, Boeing 787-10, and Boeing 777X, specifically the 777-9 variant. Although the 787-10 now seems an unlikely choice, despite KLM's current ownership of 10 such aircraft, the 777-9 remains a potential future addition to their fleet. This is partly because KLM previously operated a substantial fleet of 747-400s, which have since been retired, leaving a gap in capacity that the 777-9 could fill, given its approximately 425-seat capacity, making it a suitable replacement for the 747s. The importance of such capacity becomes clear when considering KLM's central operations in Amsterdam. The Dutch government's environmental policies may soon require Air France KLM to consider the 777-9 for their fleet. The Netherlands is looking to reduce its carbon footprint by limiting the number of flights at major airports, potentially reducing annual flight movements from nearly 500,000 to 460,000. Despite opposition from the aviation sector, these environmental regulations could be enacted, which would make larger aircraft like the 777-9 more valuable for maintaining passenger numbers while adhering to new flight movement limits. This aligns with a broader European push towards sustainable aviation, where carriers with larger, eco-friendlier, and quieter aircraft could benefit by transporting the same number of passengers on fewer flights, thus reducing flight frequency. In this context, the 777-9 emerges as a potentially ideal aircraft, offering both high-capacity 
and environmental efficiency. While the 777X was initially considered, its pending certification means it won't be available within KLM's desired timeframe, leading to their preference for the A350s. However, with the anticipated certification of the 777X in 2025, it's likely that Air France KLM will consider this high-capacity jet for future fleet expansion. Besides, to determine if KLM requires the Boeing 777-9, it's essential to examine the distribution of their Airbus A350 orders. If the majority of the orders are for the smaller A350-900 variant, it could indicate that KLM is considering additional purchases of the larger capacity Boeing 777-9 in the future. Conversely, if the order is predominantly for the larger A350-1000, then it's likely that KLM's proportion of orders from Boeing will diminish. Therefore, it remains to be seen if Boeing will have another opportunity to secure a spot in KLM's updated fleet. As an important bridge connecting Europe with other regions of the world, KLM's fleet has always been highly regarded by aviation fans when operating direct flights to about 130 destinations in about 70 countries. Obviously being chosen by this airline is something that every aircraft manufacturer wants. And when it came to upgrading its fleet, KLM surprised everyone with its A350 order. So why was it so shocking? Why KLM prefer Airbus A350 over the Boeing? The decision to choose Airbus A350 instead of KLM's Boeing was surprised mainly because of the long-term relationship between this airline and Boeing. For decades, the airlines according to the tradition of favorite aircraft of American manufacturers. The evidence is that KLM has operated many Boeing aircraft models such as 737, 777 and 787 Dreamliner for many years. And basically, airlines often like to maintain the overall fleet to reduce operating and maintenance costs. By adding A350 to his fleet, KLM introduced a new type of aircraft. It is clear that it has the ability to increase the complexity and costs related to pilot training, maintenance, and inventory of spare parts. It is like making itself difficult for themselves. The Air France's fleet has been durable with Airbus aircraft. Therefore, the airlines also chooses A350 to show that perhaps the airline has also changed in its comb when exploiting the two manufacturers. Industry analysts and market followers closely monitor aircraft orders. This A350 order may be unexpectedly based on the previous instructions or market expectations of the KLM's future fleet plan. The competition between Airbus and Boeing is very fierce, and large orders from large airlines can be considered as a certification of a manufacturer's product compared to the other manufacturer. The KLM's choice of A350 instead of Boeing's equivalent aircraft like 787 Dreamliner is considered a noticeable victory for Airbus in this competition context. This unexpected change can be seen naturally attract attention and ask questions about the reason behind this decision. The first reason that dominates KLM's decision is the range of the Airbus aircraft. Both variations of the A350R901000 have the ability to fly peak when it can extend the range of operations up to 15,316,100 kilometers. They outclass 78, 7-10 entirely with a range of 11,730 kilometers. One could argue that this is a major benefit for Airbus as it's a crucial component that enables KLM to travel to regions like South America and South Africa that Boeing is unable to reach. Viscerally, the A350's extended range allows KLM to operate non-stop flights to destinations that were previously inaccessible or required refueling stops. This translates into shorter travel times, improved passenger experience, and operational efficiency. Next, this airlines can adjust its route network more dynamically, responding to changes in demand or geopolitical situations. For instance, the closure of Russian airspace forced many airlines to reroute their flights, increasing flight times and fuel consumption. The A350's range provides KLM with greater flexibility to adapt to such challenges. And with the ability to reach more distant destinations nonstop, the airlines can tap into new markets and increase its global reach. Essentially, the airplane range empowers KLM to optimize its network, enhance customer satisfaction, and strengthen its competitive position in the global aviation market. KLM's actions are also motivated by availability. Unfilled orders for the Airbus A350 were lower than those for the Boeing 787 at the time the agreement was signed. 
Furthermore, Airbus is already building more A350 per month than Boeing. KLM will be able to acquire the Airbus earlier because the first deliveries are expected to take place in 2026, and quickly even in situations where the two planes have the same backlog of orders. Furthermore, there is no assurance at all that KLM will acquire Dreamliner any sooner. Simple to understand because in recent years, Boeing has been known to have a lot of delayed delivery. They have really had difficulty building Dreamliners. The program's quality control has encountered certain issues. Production on 787 was temporarily halted at a time. Despite their best efforts, Boeing does not appear to have fully recovered from these issues. Previously, the company discovered a new production hole, resulting in an additional delay in the around 100 Dreamliners delayed delivery. In other words, it's unclear when airlines will be able to get 787. KLM will eventually need to replace its fleet, though, and they intend to act promptly. Because of this, the business has received a lot of orders for the Airbus A350. Price is the final significant aspect mentioned. Yes, pricing is always a key factor in any transaction, and this is also true in the aviation industry. Pricing-wise, the A350 appears to be more competitive than the Dash 10. The Dash 900's initial price is 317 million USD, which is roughly 20 million less than the Dash 10's 338 million starting price. Furthermore, the savings on an order for 90 aircraft come to around 2 billion USD. These savings calculations aren't totally accurate, though. It's crucial to keep in mind that airlines rarely pay the whole cost of new aircraft, particularly when making large purchases. But even so, it can be seen that Airbus was very aggressive in pricing with a price good enough to entice KLM to change their allegiance to this deal. That's why the Dutch Airlines is investing in cleaner, quieter, and more fuel-efficient long-haul aircraft with an order for new Airbus A350. We have taken a big step towards our future with the proposed decision of purchasing new aircraft. We can make our fleet significantly cleaner, quieter, and more fuel-efficient with the A350. This is important because we are all faced with the major task of becoming more sustainable. Furthermore, we can offer our passengers much more service and comfort on intercontinental destinations, said KLM CEO Marjan Rintel. These aircraft will replace previous generation aircraft, namely the Airbus A330-200 and 300, along with the older Boeing 777-200ER. Air France KLM will also be one of the launch customers for the Airbus A350 full freighter version, having ordered eight aircraft to renew and expand its freighter fleet. With these combined orders, which include up to 99 aircraft, Air France KLM will become the world's largest A350 operator. Air France KLM CEO Benjamin Smith stated, This new order will be a major step in the renewal of the group's fleet. The Airbus A350 is a state-of-the-art aircraft with an, an excellent track record at Air France, where it has rapidly become a favorite among passengers and crew since its entry into service in 2019. It is the perfect fit for the network needs of the group and boasts outstanding performances. It is a quieter, more fuel-efficient, and more cost-effective aircraft compared to previous generations. It will be instrumental in helping the group reach our ambitious sustainability targets, including reducing 30% carbon dioxide emissions per passenger kilometer by 2030. The Airbus A350 represents the transition to a more sustainable air transport industry. The aircraft consumes 25% less fuel than previous generation aircraft of the same size, thanks to the use of lighter materials, 53% composites, and 14% titanium. Its noise footprint is also reduced by 40%. Fleet renewal is the group's key lever to immediately reduce emissions and noise. Together with the use of sustainable aviation fuels and eco-flying techniques, it is one of the pillars of the group's carbon reduction roadmap, aiming for a 30% reduction in carbon dioxide emissions per passenger by 2030 compared to 2019. Since the 2000s, Air France KLM has reduced its noise footprint by 40% and the group continues to work with all stakeholders to adapt its operations. By 2028, the share of next generation aircraft in Air France KLM's fleet is expected to reach 64% compared to 5% in 2019. It is clear that Airbus's choice of aircraft is a pretty smart move. The A350-900 can serve the routes economically and if used on routes that the 787-10 does better, 
is still low enough in cost that other factors make it economically viable. In the event that the airline needs a larger aircraft, that means the A350-1000 or the 777X. As long as they don't need anything larger than the A350-1000, that means they can use the A350 to handle anything beyond the Dreamliner's capabilities. However, that's not to say that KLM has dropped their 787. They just don't use the 787-10 or the 777X for the, the market segment that the A350 is primarily aimed at. Finally, KLM is scheduled to take delivery of its first Airbus A350 in 2026. Do you think this timeline is correct? Comment one if you agree, or zero if you don't.